this new Zoom. Hey, everybody. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming today to learn about the five most common mistakes that I see new doulas make. And I just, I just kept seeing them over and over again. I thought it would be great to just do a Zoom and help you all avoid them. <laughs> um, I also will share with you one huge mistake that I made when I first was starting out. So um, I am the doula Darcy. I have been a postpartum doula now for 11 years, which is just crazy because before that I worked in advertising and marketing. Well, before I became a doula, I had three kids. Um, and hence that's why I wanted to become a doula. But before that I worked in advertising and marketing, which has been a huge help for me in terms of launching my own postpartum doula business here in New Hampshire. And then also now I love just helping other doulas um, market themselves, get more clients. So I have an awesome, oh, Lexi, I didn't know you were in Foxborough, Mass. That is awesome. Oh, cool. Ew, Lexi, stay in touch if you're moving to New Hampshire. So um, <clears throat> I am now a doula business coach. And what my big mission in life is that I see so many of you go through the work of getting trained. Um, you are these amazing, nurturing, compassionate, smart doulas. And what I see happen is that you have a hard time getting clients. And <coughs> I see it over and over again, people that aren't being a doula, and it's not because you're not good at it, it's because no one knows that you exist. So it's like this bridge. So I wanna be the bridge between you doing this dream job that you wanna do and by getting more clients. So that is what I'm here to help you do. And so today I wanna to share five things not to do and ways to, five mistakes that I see a lot of new doulas make and how to avoid them, how to fix them, if you have already made them. So stay until the end, because I have a little coupon code for you guys to use on some of my classes as a little thank you for coming. But um, I'm excited that you're here. I love a good doula party, please. Um, there's so many of you, I can't see you all, but I was gonna say, raise your hand, hit the button to raise your hand or type your questions in the chat or just give a wave. I'm happy to answer questions as we go and plenty of time at the end for questions as well. Um, so the first big mistake that I see new doulas make is good old fashioned, just imposter syndrome. Thinking that an imposter syndrome is when you feel like you're not good enough to be a doula. Meaning like you think you don't have enough training. You don't have enough experience. Oh, look at that doula over there. She's amazing. She's been doing this for two years and I haven't had one client yet. Um, that's imposter syndrome. When you feel like you, you feel like you can't go be a doula because you're an imposter because you, you um, haven't done it yet. But if you have done your training, you are ready to be a doula. You, that's all you need. Um, and Lauren, I see you nodding your head. Yes. So it's true. You, um, and this is important work. Um, there's so many families, there's so many babies being born. There's a global pandemic. I mean, doulas are needed. So I posted this on Instagram the other day as a quote, but don't let your anxiety be the thing that stops someone from getting the doula support that might change their life. Like you have the tools in your doula bag in your head, in your heart, to literally change someone's life, change their birthing experience, change their postpartum experience for the better. Um, so don't let imposter syndrome be the thing that gets in the way of that. Um, so I, I, I just, I can't stress this enough. I do talk about it a lot because I see it over and over again. You, uh, and, and I, I mean, it's common. We're human. I, I get it. I've, I've been there too. Um, <clears throat> you know, feeling like, well, who am I to 
post on Facebook that I, I'm a doula. Like I don't, I've never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. There's two other doulas in town that would be, do, are doing a better job. Yeah. So maybe there's a couple other doulas in your town. I bet there's a hundred people having a baby like <laughs> you, you're needed. So try to, um, you got to just kick that imposter syndrome to the curb. And my favorite way to do that is obviously the number one way is to build confidence is just get out there and do it. But that's hard, right? <laughs> so let me know if this is resonating. You guys type yes in the chat if you're feeling this or if this is you, like, are you stuck in that feeling of overwhelm? Um, so try to think of that, that passion that you have, like what the passion that drove you to sign up for the training, put the money down to take your doula training and, um, you know, sign up to do this work. That passion is what has to drive you to keep going, to get over that hurdle of, um, yes, I'm going to go network. Yes. I'm going to post on social media. Yes. I'm going to go out there and get clients, um, that you have to let that passion drive you. Um, yes. Uh, yes. I'm learning that the real battle is within, um, <laughs> Karen, there are, um, yeah. So Karen is cheering me on because there's, if there's a few doulas and a hundred babies, I literally, this is actually that little like math problem is what really helped me when I finished my training. I remember being so excited. I loved every minute of my training. I had notebooks full of notes and I came home and, and the next day I was just like, yes, I'm going to be a doula. And then I was like, oh, wait, I, I, can, I don't just go get a job. Like I have to find the clients and, and who am I to do that? Um, and there was uh, Krista Malte, who a lot of you, she probably trained a lot of you. Um, she is a doula in my town who had a lot of experience to this beautiful website. Everybody loved her. And I thought, oh gosh, who am I to do this if she's there doing it? But I added up, we live where we live. There's like three hospitals, you know, within like 20 minutes. And so I called the hospitals, each hospital found out how many babies were born there every year. And I can't remember exactly, but it was over a thousand babies born every year within a 30 minute radius of me. And there were two postpartum doulas. So I was like, okay, there's plenty of families for us both to work. So that's another, this is another you. And a lot of you maybe have heard me talk about collaboration over competition. That's a great thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about, you know, who are you to come be a doula new on the scene in your city, town, area, when there's already other doulas? Like, I guarantee you there are more babies than there are doulas. So you got to just get out there and do it. Okay. So the number two mistake is um, that, uh, yes, Kayla, this recording will be available. I will email it out to everybody who's registered. You'll get this via email tomorrow. So um, <clears throat> the number two mistake is creating a logo or a name that is super complicated and hard to so in, in terms of a logo it's hard to see hard to read like a cursive that's really teeny and beautiful but hard to read um, and choosing a name that's complicated and hard to remember so um, if you guys are members of my free facebook group the doula marketing group um, i did a video in there the other day about doula logos and it was and uh, um got a lot of great comments and a lot of you have really beautiful logos, but I see so many doulas create logos that are more like a beautiful work of art. They're gorgeous, but they're very intricate and complicated and they have words and trees and babies and uh, pregnant people and hair and hearts. And <laughs> um, a logo is a symbol. So like the McDonald's arches, the Nike swoosh, the target target, like super simple symbols that are easily recognizable. That is what your logo should be, not a beautiful work of art. So because 
what happens is that gorgeous piece of art that you've created or had someone create, when you try to put it on a t-shirt, like right here, emblem, um, it's not gonna come out. It's If it's too intricate, it's just gonna all bleed and you're not gonna be able to see it. Same if you're printing it on a little business card that this is this big, if your logo is just this size, it's not gonna show up. Or if it's your little profile pic, um, on Facebook or something, you want it to be something that's really easily recognizable and not a blob when it's super small for your logo. So, um, the other thing is your name. So I know, um, a lot of doulas, um, struggle with coming, trying to figure out their name. And I would just say, same as your logo, keep it simple. So you want your business name to be something that is easy to remember, easy to say, easy to spell. Um, because, so for instance, say, oh, um, shoot, who was it? Sarah commented in my doula village this morning that she got a client at the dog park today. <laughs> so when you're out chatting with someone, at the dog park, at the grocery store, you need a business name that they will remember so that, that when they go home and Google you or look up your website or try to find you on Instagram, they can remember your name. If your business name, and I always throw this business name under the bump, bus, bump, <laughs> um, but like bump, babies and beyond. I mean, it's super cute, but that person gets home from the dog park and they're like, oh, was it bump belly beyond was it bump baby and bellies what was it what was the order oh i'll go i'll just look it up on instagram and you type in bumps bellies and beyond and there's 700 doulas <laughs> with some form of that name yes they're not all in your town but that person from the dog park doesn't know which one to follow doesn't know which one that you are um so make it be something that is easy to remember, easy to spell, like so that when they go type it into Google or just to type your URL in, um, if it, there's a word that might be hard to spell, that's going to mess, might mess people up. Um, the other thing is that... Um, so if you can like throw in a local word too. So I live in Dover, New Hampshire, which I was super lucked out. So I named my business Dover Doula, which has been amazing because it's easy to remember, easy to spell the D and the D. Um, you know, obviously not everybody's going to get that, but depending on where you live. But the other great thing about it is my city is in my name. So when someone is on Google in Dover, New Hampshire, and they type doula near me, guess what website comes up first? Doverdoula.com. So if you can have your name in your web, web URL, I'm sorry, if you can have your location, your city or something like that in your, you, the URL in your business name, that's going to really help you in terms of search, which is huge. Um, so try to pick a name, you know, that is, if it's not, you know, your city name, something that at least is easy to remember, easy to say, something that will stick in people's brains so that if they see you speaking at a prenatal yoga class, if they meet you at, at the store, if they, if you tell your gynecologist at your annual exam that you're a doula now, she can remember it and she'll start, you know, if it's an easy to remember name, it's easier for people to refer you. That's a huge piece of this. You want it to be easy for people to refer your name along. If your business name is 10 words long and it, you know, the words work in all different sorts of order, no one is going to be, it's going to be harder for people to refer you. So same with your logo. And if you want to more dive deep into my tips on the logo, go into the doula marketing group on Facebook and you can watch that video. And yes, bump to blessing. This will be, if you had uh, DM me your email address and I will um, email you the recording of this. So number three mistake is that you wait too long 
to start your social media accounts or start your website or start posting on social media. So what I mean by this is you have done your training, but you feel like you can't get your website up on the web until you're certified, or you can't make a Facebook account, Facebook business page until you're certified. Is this you? Type yes in the chat if this is you. If you're waiting um, to, you know, I talk to so many doulas, they just want to make sure everything's organized, that they're certified before they like make it official on the internet. Oh my God, all of you are saying, I did this, don't do it. Okay. Um, so someone just said, oh my God, there's so many yeses they are going by so fast. Somebody said, yes, I created them, but I don't know what to post. Okay. That's okay. At least you're ahead of some of the others that didn't do this because at least you exist again. If you are in the middle of your training or you're trying to get those certifying births or certifying postpartum families, and your friend of your friend is like, oh yeah, I know this pregnant person, I'll pass you along. What is, so think of yourself. If you're gonna buy something that costs more than 50 bucks, what is the first thing you do? If you're gonna try a new restaurant, what is the first thing you do? You look it up online, right? So if someone is thinking of having you come to their birth, even if you're doing it for free, even if you're doing it, you know, at a discount, cause it's going to be one of your certifying births or whatever, that's a whole other conversation. They're going to look you up online. And if you don't exist there, they're going to be like, ah, I, I don't know. Do I want this person to see me naked? If, you know, it, in this day and age, if we don't exist on the web as a business, it's like, you're not legit. So the sooner you can get at least social media pages up, uh, the better. The sooner you can get your website up, the better. For another reason for getting your website up um, as soon as you can is search engine. Google, you know, if your website's brand new, Google doesn't show it in searches yet because it doesn't trust you yet. It, it starts to show you after your website has existed for, uh, uh, who knows, a few weeks, a few months. So the sooner you get your website up, the better that is for your search engine optimization. But I mean, I get it, website's a big deal. At the very least, um, make a Facebook business page. Um, what should you name it if you don't have a business name yet? Well, you, you could be Darcy Sowers Doula, like start there, start with your name and the word doula and, um, you know, you can always change it. That could be your business name, A, um, if your name is easy to spell and remember. Um, <clears throat> but it could be your first name, Darcy the Doula. That could be your Facebook business page. You can always go back and change it later once you have chosen that official name. So yes, people are saying a website costs a lot of money. Where do you go to create a website? Um, this is uh, my number four mistake um, is creating a, I don't want to say a bad website. I'll, I'll clarify that. So again, with search engine optimization, SEO, which sounds scary, but you, you a huge part of your success of being a doula is whether your business shows up in Google searches, right? People are going to Google doula near me, postpartum doulas, you know, uh, things like that. And if you show up near the top, you get those inquiries that it just makes your business so much easier if you have good Google rankings. So one of the, the fourth mistake that I see new doulas make is they don't want to spend the money on a website. So they create a Wix or a Weebly website. And because those are free, but the problem is Google can't the Google magical robots have a harder time scrolling Wix and Weebly. So that's a, without getting into too much of the technology, Wix and Weebly websites tend to not show up on Google searches as much as a Squarespace or a WordPress. WordPress is the best way to go for a website in terms of search engine. 
but Squarespace is really good too. I have a Squarespace website. Um, and every time I say this, people are like, I have a Wix website and it does show up or I paid extra, you know, Wix is working on this, but it's still a big problem. And I can't tell you the calls I've had with doulas that wish they had just started with a WordPress or a Squarespace website because of the hassle of uh, creating a website and then no one sees it. Um, <clears throat> all right, so how do I transfer my website I already made? You can call, you can go to, I like to use Bluehost. Um, ooh, I should give you guys a link. But you, any hosting site that you use, call them up. I like using Bluehost because a human answers the phone. Um, and they can help you with transferring that over. If you haven't started your website yet, I highly recommend going with a company called Birthing Your Brand. They are very affordable. They have doula website templates that you just can plug your information into. They're WordPress sites. They're beautiful. They're functional. They're mobile friendly. They'll show, your stuff will show up on search engines. You can save 10% with coupon code doula Darcy because um, I love them so much. Also, another option is uh, Sarah Julison, who she's the website doula. Um, she has she's a little more expensive, but you get a little more of a one on one um, and what am I individual website. Um, and same thing, I think mention my name, you'll also save 10%. Yes, if I can put those in the chat. Oh, yes. Um, so yes, birthing your brand. You know what? I'll I'll um, I will. E everybody's going to get an email with the link to this. I will have all those links in there in the email that you get first thing tomorrow. Um, <coughs> so websites are the. Um, you know, I always say I teach a lot about marketing. I don't teach about spending money like this. When you work with me, it's not about, oh, come do this and spend $500 on radio ads or TV ads. That is not what I'm about. I am all about grassroots free stuff. I launched my doula business without spending much money, but it is worth spending money on a website, like a few hundred dollars. Um, and just to get you going, because again, if it, you have a good one, that people can use on their phones that shows up in Google searches, you are gonna get more, so many more clients than if your website does not do those things. So speaking of spending money, I promise to tell you the $250 mistake that I made when I was starting my business. So I, um, like I said, I had a 10 year career in advertising and marketing. So I, that helped me get clients. I got going faster than most doulas do. Um, based on that experience that I had. But running a marketing a doula business is different than marketing a restaurant or a you know, plumbing business or something like that. So when I was first starting out, there was a um, local 5K in my area on Mother's Day called Moms on the Run. And I was like, oh, perfect. Moms. I'm going to, I'll sponsor the race. I spent $250 to be a sponsor. And I, that got me a table at the race. And I remember, oh, I'm so excited. I got balloons and I set up all this stuff on the table. I told my husband, like, I'm going to get like five clients. <laughs> um, I thought this was what was going to just launch my business. I was brand spanking new. Um, and it was a total bust. <laughs> because what I didn't really think through is that people, moms that were running a 5k weren't pregnant and they weren't early postpartum. They were moms of like toddlers, which yes, you could argue that someday they might have another baby again. But the other thing was they came to run the race and then they went home. Like no one stopped by my table. They went, they went to the registration table, got their bib, ran the race, and then they left. <laughs> so I literally probably, you know, there were hundreds of people there running the race. I talked to maybe two 
and they were other people that were like, oh, I'm thinking of becoming a doula. Like it, it was a total wash. The one saving grace was that the race director, I donated a gift certificate as a raffle prize. And there was one pregnant lady like watching some, her friend run and she gave the gift certificate to the pregnant lady. So I did end up getting a client out of it, but only because that the race director felt bad for me, <laughs> did that. So that's a, a great example of that you don't have to spend money to be a successful doula. Like I said, spending some money to get your website going is a good investment. Okay, so that was number four. So the last five, fifth mistake is that uh, you doulas don't do enough networking in your local community. Um, and again, this is free. And this is the best thing that you need to do to start getting clients. Network with the other doulas in your community, the birth, other birth professionals, get out there, meet them, stop by their offices, email, you know, if with COVID in your area, if, you know, send emails, make connections on Facebook. It's another reason to start posting on social media. Yes, potential clients are going to see your post, but also the local birth community is going to see your post too. And that is huge in terms of networking. So um, I can't tell you the number of doulas that are like, I made a website, I post on social media three times a week, and I haven't gotten a client yet. And I say, well, what have you done for networking? And they're like, nothing. <laughs> You have to network with the community. People, here's the thing, you have to do it all. <laughs> you have to post on social media. You have to have the good website. You have to, uh, event, you know, eventually. This is all a process, but you have to network. People, in order to, for them to hire you, to be their doula, they need to see you in terms of like, they need to, there's a rule in advertising, like people need to see or hear your message seven times before they take action. So people, the pregnant people in your area, they need to see your rack cards hanging at the local coffee shop. They need to see your posts on social media. They need to have their birth doula mention you as a postpartum doula. They need to have their prenatal yoga teacher talk about you, you know, mention you as a doula. They need to hear your name in the community when they're out and about. So that is why networking is so huge. And again, it's free. Like, yes, go print, maybe make some rack cards or business cards that you can leave with them. Um, <coughs> but um, networking is huge and it's overwhelming. And I get it. You get the imposter syndrome. Like, who am I to go talk to this prenatal yoga teacher, but, or send an email, but this is, if you want to do this dream job of being a doula, that's amazing and awesome and the best job in the world. This is what you need to do. You need to make connections in your community. Um, Ooh, Rosie, great question. Is it beneficial to always keep business cards on you? Um, yes, for those instances at the dog park where a conversation gets started and you want to, you know, then they don't have to remember your business name if they have your card. Um, I used, I keep a stack in my car um, and, um, or my purse, you know, sometimes, but um, it is great to have those on you on the off chance you start talking to someone and they want more information or like why I used to keep them in my car. I would keep a big stack. And as I was driving around town and, you know, saw a new yoga studio or was driving by a coffee shop that I knew had a community board, I would just go in and pin one up or go in and drop off a stack. So it is good to have some business cards on you. And I know that's another thing where, um, it can be scary. Like, oh my God, I'm making this business card and it, maybe I'm, I don't like my business name, or maybe I, you know, you're nervous about the design or what to put on it. Just print 50, <laughs> go to Vista print and just print 50. It'll cost you $19 and you can change it after that, but get something to get started. Um, oh, Tony. Yes. I, she found some local doula groups on Facebook and made an intro in there. Yes, 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 yes. So that is networking too. Just being active on social media in 
the um, local Facebook group. So I have a class uh, um, and this is where your coupon uh, code comes in. Yes, Allison, rebranding is always possible. You can always change it. Um, I have a class on um, how to set up your top three referral sources. So how to network. It's about networking, like who to network with, who are the most, um, I guess, uh, important people or that you'll get the most bang for your buck with in terms of networking. It includes email templates and all that. It's only $47. You can save $15 with coupon code mistake. Whoops, I've got to send this to everybody. Mistake 15. Um, and you guys will save $15. Um, I also have another class on how to get doula clients when you're just starting out. And this covers how to attract clients, dives a little bit deeper on um, websites, more on where to spend money, how to build your referral network. That one's only $97. It's honestly like four hours of training. It is so packed with information and you save $15 with coupon code mistake15 for coming today. This is the little bundle of information that you need that bridges that gap between you finish your doula training, but now like how the heck do I get clients? How the heck do I get people to start finding out about me. That is the, what it comes down to people are, it's not that you're not getting hired because you're not good enough. You're not trained enough. You're not experienced enough. You're not getting hired because people don't know you exist. So this class like bridges that gap fills in those, um, fills in that gap and helps you start to get noticed in your community. Um, that code expires in four days, I think. So use it over the next couple of days. And oh, let me give you the, um, let's see, the networking class also. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is that I was going to say, oh, Asia wants to know, should you include postpartum doula in your business name or just doula? It is up to you. Um, I, I didn't, my name is, my business name is Dover Doula. And then I, um, oh God, sorry. Music is starting. Okay. I'm doing too much at once. Um, sorry about that. Okay. A little Adele for you. Um, uh, my business name is Dover Doula. And then like my tagline is postpartum doula support um, for the family or whatever. So you can do something like that. Um, triad basic postpartum says she did. And now she's wishing that she hadn't. Why do you wish that you hadn't? Maybe because um, you are offering like placenta encapsulation or birth doula services now. So if you want to keep it more general, um, you could do just doula. So there's the link to the networking class. That's only $47. So save 15, you get it for like 32. And then um, the how to get doula clients class is up above. I will email you all these links. I will email you the links for the website uh, birthing your brand and the website doula and all those, um, in an email, maybe tonight, probably first thing in the morning, um, to everybody who registered. So what are the questions that you guys have? I hope this was helpful. And I hope that, um, it's not overwhelming. If you are sitting here thinking like, oh my God, I made three out of these five mistakes that she just talked about. I want you to know, like as Allison said, you can always change stuff. You can always go back and fix it. Done is better than perfect. None of us are perfect. Um, and you, you can always go back and change your name, change your logo, change your website. Um, so um, 
Ashley, tell us what your name is. She's not sure if it would be easy to remember. Um, okay, so Kayla wants to know, is it a bad idea to have too many services? Um, that depends. Um, I think you can have as many services if you want, but you've got to make your website very clear. So it's like when you go, this is the analogy I always use. It's like when you go to order ice cream at an ice cream shop or you're standing in the ice cream aisle and there are 700 flavors and you're like, oh my God, they all sound good. I, I just don't even know what to get. <laughs> but if it's like chocolate, vanilla, or cherry vanilla, it's like you can easily make a decision. So not to say you shouldn't offer a lot of services, but if your website is like, the landing page is just like, here's the 700 services that I have. If it's too busy and too complicated, people are going to just move on to the next one. So as long as your website is simple and clear, um, that is the best way to go. Okay. Ashley says her business name is Blessed Miracles. That's good because that, I mean, no one's going to say, was it Miracles Blessed? Like people, yes, you can remember Blessed Miracles. Um, and that's probably great in your local area. The, uh, the one thing about it is like, if someone looks you up on Facebook or Instagram, they, they might see other, you know, blessed miracle doula services from all over the country. So if you could be blessed miracles of Omaha or, you know, whatever, wherever you're located, you know, maybe add that in like Omaha blessed miracles. All right, Suzanne, my business name is the Motherload Doula, but I'm now offering infant, low, infant sleep education too. Should I change my name to incorporate that? Um, you could change it to Motherload Doula and, and sleep consulting. That's what I would do, especially if you've had Motherload Doula for a while, because that's a great name. And um, I would just add it on as a service. Um, I'm currently a medical biller and coder, and I'm thinking of incorporating this into my business, but don't know if this is something that is use that could be useful. Like you want to, I don't even know what you mean, Rosie. Like you would do medical billing for your clients. Um, okay, so Kay, thoughts on my business name, Magnolia and Sage. That's kind it, it's beautiful. And I feel bad like tearing everybody's names down, but that that's good. Like um the what I was gonna say is people might be like, was it Sage and Magnolia or Magnolia and Sage? But I mean that I mean that's only two words, so that is pretty good. Um <coughs> all right. All these, whoa, there's so many questions coming in. Um, the other thing is, oh, a lot of these, so someone just asked about, um, a, uh, da, 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 um, LLC. That is, we are covering that. Jody of Hip to Heart and I have a day for new doulas coming up where we are going into all that stuff. And it is on June 21st. And the link is right there. Uh, whoops. I don't know if that worked. Yeah. Um, day for new doulas is taking one day, Monday, June 21st. She and I are going to walk you through the whole thing. Like, getting, you know, LLC versus DBA versus sole proprietor, tracking your mileage, how to do this, how to do that, marketing 101, networking 101. Um, Jody's going to be talking about all about like the client flow, like from getting the in inquiry via email to getting yourself hired, like that workflow. Um, okay. Uh, all right. I am so excited for this payday. Can't come quick enough. Love it. Okay. So let's see. Um, we are also going to be talking about malpractice insurance. Um, okay. It, 
Uh, da, 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 da. My name is Bella Bambino's doulas. I think it's much. Um, that's cute again. So, um, but that's good. Like, again, that's not better than six words that you can't remember the order of. Um, so the one thing, Bella Bambino's birth, doula, my, baby whisperer, birth services, those are great. But like, if you do again, like probably no. So here's a huge thing. Do a Google search of a name that you're thinking of. See what's going, what other people in your area have. See what comes up. See what's the top ranking website for whatever business name you're thinking of. Um, and if you see that there's 50 doulas of all, all over the world with the same name, like maybe you want to pick something else because your website will get lost in the shuffle. Oh, medical billing for midwives now that insurances are, yeah. Oh my God, midwives would pay you to handle billing the insurance for them. That could be huge. Um, so, oh, Kayla, are you going to cover self-employment taxes in the day for new doulas? We are actually not because that is a tax question and I don't want to get into tax stuff because that would depend on your state and that you are better off hiring, you're better off hiring a tax accountant to help you with your business taxes. That is another place to spend a little money. It's not that much money um, and it will save you money. Like a, an accountant will help you um, get all the business expenses to bring your what you owe in taxes down. Um, and then tell you how to set up self-employment taxes correctly. Um, just so, I, I mean, I love paying my lady because I know I'm not going to get in trouble <laughs> with the IRS. And she saved me. I did my taxes for, by myself for the first couple of years. Um, and when, when I finally paid to have them done, she saved, she got me such a big return because she helped me find expenses to write off. Um, it, that it more than paid for itself. So uh, we are not going to talk about self-employment taxes. We are going to talk about um, whether to be a sole proprietor or an LLC, whether, um, let me look at the website. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to be talking all about marketing. Jody's going to be talking about networking. Um, we have all sorts of templates and worksheets for you to download. Oh, Adele might come back on. Um, looking for Adele sorry. might come back. <laughs> sorry. Um, so talk about the steps to like setting up your, um, bank account, you know, what you need to get going with a bank account, the business forms, all that stuff. Um, so Leah, how would you start a conversation with other birth professionals when starting to network with them? You definitely need my class on networking because I give you all those tips and even emails that you can copy and paste. Um, and it starts with sharing your passion. Um, and that, you know, connect with your shared passion is the best way to do that in terms of networking. So use coupon code mistake 15 on both those classes. Unfortunately, because I'm partnering with Jody, that coupon code won't work for a day for new doulas, but the day for new doulas is only $97. It is a deal. Whoops. Um, <clears throat> because we are designing it because of this. We are both meeting so many doulas that are getting stuck in the, like in the overwhelm of how to get their business going. And we want you out there being a doula, not home, spending six months wondering, what should I name my business? How do I get my website up? How do I get <laughs> clients? We want you just out there working. So that's what that, so that's, we're going to take that day to just walk you through the steps. You have access to two mentors. Um, it's going to be amazing. It'll be a lot of fun. We're giving away tons of raffle prizes as well that you'll have a chance to win throughout the day. So, <coughs> excuse me, that will be super fun. So, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I will send you an email with all these links um, to recap 
This has been super fun. Um, thanks for joining me. Find me on Instagram at the doula Darcy. Make sure you join my free Facebook group, the doula marketing group. I'm always in there answering questions. So I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it and that this was helpful. I love a good doula party. You guys know, and, um, um, yeah, so let me know how it goes. I hope this has inspired you and help is going to help you avoid some mistakes so that you can get out there working faster. There are moms and babies and birthing people that need you right now. So you can do it. Kick that imposter syndrome to the curb and, um, let's, let's, let's do this. So I can't wait to see you guys on social media and connect and I hope you guys take advantage of those classes. They're a really great deal. And that's, um, that's what it's all about. Get you out there serving. So have a great night and I will see you guys soon. Bye.